Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God's Help for Satan's Upside Down World. So this is like uh, God's Help for Satan's Upside Down World manual. It tries to teach us how to live God's right side up in Satan's upside down world. So how did we get a upside-down world? Well, first Satan chose to sin against God and got kicked out of heaven. Then God created Adam and Eve, and they decided to side with Satan to create an upside-down world with Satan. God wanted mankind to choose to live in paradise forever, to live a right-side-up life in this world in paradise. But because they chose to side with Satan, who's sort of like the opposite of God or something, it turned this whole world into an upside-down world, Satan's upside-down world. So instead of people believing in truth, they choose to believe in lies. Instead of people wanting to do good, they want to do evil. Instead of people wanting to obey God, they want to disobey God. Instead of people wanting to love, they want to hate. Instead of people wanting to give, they want to act selfish. Instead of people wanting to be humble, they want to be proud. Instead of people wanting to experience peace, they experience fear. Instead of people wanting to experience joy, they experience depression. Instead of people wanting to experience blessing on earth, they want to experience punishment on earth. It's like an upside down world an opposite of God's will world or something. We were born into it after Adam and Eve, and we either seek God's help to deal with it now, or we don't. And God has help for us in Satan's upside-down world today. God's help for us is the cross, take our sins away, which separate us from God. So we can start to be a friend of God, like Adam was before the fall. And God's help for this upside-down world is His Holy Spirit, the power of His Holy Spirit, to obey His will to love, to teach us truth to believe in, so we can have a mind full of God's truth instead of a mind full of Satan's lies, live a right-side-up life in a Satan's upside-down world if we want to. Satan's insane, and if you want to follow Satan, you'll be insane too. But you can be sane with God and His Holy Spirit and truth if you want to be. Satan's lies will make you insane. God's truth will make you sane. It's like Christianity is like coming to your senses. You're acting insane. All of a sudden, you become sane. Like a prodigal son in a pig pen. I've been believing lies. I've been acting insane. I better start believing God's truth and start acting sane. It's a free will choice. We could choose to be either Jesus followers or demon followers, and most of the world wants to choose to be demon followers, not Jesus followers today, making it a very upside-down world to live in today. With disobedient to God churches and false teaching churches instead of obedient to God churches, truth-teaching churches, like the Book of Acts church. It creates awful families, awful schools, awful governments, awful media, awful churches. It brings judgment down on this world. It creates things like economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy, World War III. And we have to decide to seek God's help to deal with that stuff. We have to live in Satan's upside-down world because of sin, because of Satan, free will choice. But we can seek God's help to live right side up, Satan's upside-down world today if we want to. Like Jesus tried to show us to do, like Paul tried to show us to do. Like Paul, forgiveness of sin through the cross, relationship with God now. Power of the Holy Spirit to choose to put the sinful flesh nature to death in us and start to walk in the power of Jesus' spirit. Jesus can handle Satan's upside-down world today if we want to seek his help to do it. 
without Jesus' help, we're not going to handle Satan's upside-down world very well. You can't expect much from Satan's upside-down world today. It's crazy. It's wicked. It's a crazy, wicked land. But you can't expect God to help you to live successfully through it. It's like a motto I have. I gotta live in Satan's upside down world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, help me not to be bothered by it. So the future looks like in Satan's upside down world, economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy in World War III. But God's trying to tell his people, don't let it bother you. I control it. Dance with me through it. Be a happy Noah through it or something. And understand what God's will is to do in uh, Satan's upside down world. Well, God's will to do is whatever he's telling you to do now. It's like we're under the law of the Spirit. Whatever the Spirit tells us to do, that's the law for us to choose to obey or disobey now. It's not 300 rules from the nation of Israel that we've got to try to figure out how to do in the flesh. It's what God tells you to do now, and you obey Him to do it. You obey the law of the Spirit. Love me, says God. Love others. Do the two greatest commandments. You obey all the commandments. Act loving like God is loving. So the way we successfully deal with Satan's upside down world is to pray and obey. What do you want me to do now, God? Get an answer back. Or what do you want me to do now, Jesus? Get an answer back. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me, said Jesus. And then have the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. You're telling me to do this, love my enemies or whatever, go to a cross or something. Teach truth or something. Give me the power to do it. And he'll give us the power to live a successful life in Satan's upside-down world. All through the Bible, they had to live in a Satan's upside-down world since Adam and Eve. Moses had to live that way in a Satan's upside-down world. Daniel had to live here in an upside-down world. Jesus, Paul, lived in Satan's upside-down world. Noah lived in Satan's upside-down world. And we got to live in Satan's upside-down world today. So this is a manual on how to get God's help to deal with Satan's upside down world today if we want to read it. That's obedience to God. Jesus says, you need to read my word. You need to let me teach the truth from it. You need to use this to live a right side up, right thinking life in a wrong thinking, upside down world. <laughs> and uh, it's like it was uh, Satan's upside down world in the days of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is trying to tell the king, you should obey God, not disobey God. The king doesn't want to listen to Jeremiah. Then great judgment comes. God allows Israel to go into slavery and slaughter with the wicked nation of Babylon. But he could help Daniel through that. Daniel had to live in a Satan's upside down Babylon. But God could help him through it. And God can help us through this sort of like a satanic world empire government today who wants to use the new technology against us instead of for us to enslave us and slaughter us, not help us. But like Romans 13 talks about, God controls it all. He could control the heart of Pharaoh. He controlled the heart of the king of Babylon. He controls Satan like a puppet today. He controls the satanic world empire government. And like Romans 13 says, he can use that government to bless his people and to punish wicked people with. They're not in control. God's in control. They don't get away with an ounce of their wickedness. They've got to pay for it all unless they get saved through the cross and become a Christian. And then they can get saved from their sins. But if they don't get saved from their sins, it's hell time when they drop dead, which could be by supper time for people. And they've got to pay for every sin they did. Because they rejected God's gift of his own son Jesus to take their sins away. They rejected the gift of the Holy Spirit to stop living the upside down with Satan or whatever. And start living right side up with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So these people, they can kind of look good on the outside. 
lying to us. But what's on the inside? The religious leaders kind of look good on the outside, but Jesus said inside they look like rotting corpses. They're full of demons. Their father, Satan, they want to do his will. So you can't expect to believe a lot of what wicked people are telling you. It's all lies, propaganda and lies. But you can believe what Jesus is telling you. We need to go to Jesus for the true news, not the wicked lying media for the true news, because it's false news. So, we have to understand the Bible teaches we're living in a Satan's upside down world. The Bible teaches you need God's help to deal with it, like Daniel in a lion's den. Noah on an ark. It's like when I was a kid going to Sunday school. My family wasn't Christian. They weren't teaching me anything from the Bible. But when I went to Sunday school, they would teach us stuff from the Bible. In my public school, the kindergarten teacher was teaching the story of Noah's Ark. And that's about living in a wicked, upside-down world of God's judgment. When I went to Sunday school, it was about Daniel and the lion's den. Daniel in slavery to Babylon in an upside-down world, but God helped them through it. And a little bit of faith might have been planted in my heart as a kid or something, going to Sunday school or kindergarten. And eventually, God could help that uh, seed of faith grow, and then I could choose to obey God to want to believe Christianity is my answer for this upside-down world. And seek what the truth is in this Bible and believe in it then start praying and obeying so that I could be like a Daniel in a upside down Babylon or something but have God's help to deal with it I'd be like a Paul in an upside down world in a prison for two years or something I could see God's help to deal with it so heaven will be like a right side up world forever but you have to die first to go there you're living in Satan's upside down world now, but you can have God's help to deal with it. You can have your sins forgiven through the cross. You can have the power of the Holy Spirit to obey God through it. You can have God's help through it. You can be a servant to the Most High God here on earth. You can do God's will with his power to do it. You can learn truth and try to teach truth even if nobody wants to believe what you're saying. And that's God's success today. Like Noah, he preached to people for about a hundred years, nobody listened to him, then the judgment fell on him and God helped him to handle the judgment. I've been preaching to people for about 35 years, nobody seems to want to listen to me much and uh, the judgment's coming soon. But God will help me through the judgment. Like Noah on the Ark, or like uh, Daniel in Satanic World Empire, or Babylon or something. I don't need the mark of the beast. God can feed me in the wilderness for 40 years if he wants to. I don't need to be afraid of my enemies. God controls them. World War III could be going on around me. I'm perfectly safe with Jesus. He controls it all. You can dance with Jesus around World War III if you want to. You can rejoice in the Lord always, even in Satan's upside down world. So that's a bit about God's help for Satan's upside-down world.